let us know how do you manage to do it in 20 minutes. <laughs> Hello? Seikit, are you trying to say something? Your mic is uh, active. Okay, I guess uh, they don't want to share how they did it. I mean, it's okay. It doesn't matter if it's uh, GPT or anything. It just uh, just wanted to know what approaches people use to be able to do it. So for us, we managed to initially when we did it, I think it took us about 20 minutes, isn't it, Jura? Uh Yeah, some 20 to 21 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and that was for a moderately sized set. And then uh, later on, uh, okay, here's another question for you guys. How many of you think you can do it? How many of you think it's possible to do it in under five minutes? You can just like raise your hands or something. I mean, do you, okay, let me ask you this question. Do you think it's possible to do it in under a minute? Anyone wants to say, give me, give, tell me if it's possible under a minute? Considering we now know the GitHub APIs or any API for that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so right now we are particularly talking about GitHub API. Okay. So now uh, since we know, and uh, I think we have done quite a lot of research on the available libraries for uh, Python, etc. I think we we can do it. If not one, uh, probably. Uh, under five minutes, uh, I would yeah. say. Yeah, uh, that's absolutely right. I mean, uh, Jivaraj, what uh, did we manage to do with the, I think it's under a minute, right? Uh, yeah, it was under a minute. Yeah, so, uh, some 27 seconds. Yeah, so we we managed to scrape uh, oh, wow. <laughs> approximately 13,500 uh, repos. repos yeah, in uh, sort of under half a minute. So that's what we'll quickly show you today, that it is possible to do these things if you carefully construct your queries. So that's what uh, Jivraj will demonstrate to you. Um, and then later on, I'll put on another poll, and that sh will probably surprise most of you. Okay, So go ahead, Jivraj. <laughs> Uh, should I zoom in a bit or is it readable? It will be better if you zoom in a bit. I think, I mean, it's readable, but uh, more font size is comfortable. 
So is that okay now? Yes, it's okay. <coughs> So this was the main code that we were running, and then what we are doing. So first thing we need to get all the user profiles. So th that we can get your uh, four to five request, and then we can store those profiles in in a, a list. So what do I mean by user profile? So if I look at uh, this particular data set, then this is what I'm talking about. Now, if I have this profile, what I can do, I can create construct uh, <coughs> URL for repos. Uh, so this is the URL where I can find all the repos. It, uh, it have this login. So if I can store this login, I can just uh, uh, plug it inside this particular format and I can construct the HTTP requ request. So first we need to get those those uh, logins. Once we have those logins, this page, what it is doing, it is just constructing the same URL. So this, this is the one. Where is the repo one? Yeah, this is the one that we are constructing. And on every page, uh, we are just uh, asking for 100 uh, repos. And then what we are doing, we are running a fetch all function. And that we are running it in uh, asynchronously. So what it will do, it will run this particular function. And what it is doing, it is, it is creating a list of tasks. And then it is executing those tasks one by one. And what, what these tasks are doing, they are just sending a request onto the URL that we have. So the thing, uh, why we are able to achieve, uh, how we are able to make it happen in less time is because of uh, this semaphore. So what it is allowing us to do, it, this, this is allowing us to send 28 requests asynchronously. So Parallelly, I can send 28 requests. So that means so if, if I am sending one request at a time, so now I, I am able to send 28 requests in the same amount of time. And then we are also putting a delay of 2.5 seconds. So if you have 350 users, and let us say you want to extract first page on repose page, so then what it will do in first 28 so in first 2.5 seconds you will be able to fetch all the repos for 28 users so this is like uh, you are doing requests par parallelly so your speed will increase by 28 uh, times so if earlier you were taking 20 minutes now the time you will take will be 20 divided by 28 so this is uh, how we, we were able to decrease the time. And the limit that is allowed by GitHub is you can, I think, uh, Carlton, we were able to send, we are allowed to send 100 requests, right? Yeah, so GitHub's uh, documentation says uh, 100 requests uh, simultaneously you can send to the endpoint. Uh, but the limit per minute is 900 uh, per minute. So even if you send 100 requests simultaneously, you still have some other secondary limits that uh, you have to obey. And uh, But yeah, 100 per simultaneously is what you can do. But the reason we chose 28 is if you, if Jivaraj just scroll up just a little bit. Scroll up, oh, sorry. The other way, the other way. Yeah. So if you look on there, um, we uh, I've done a calculation that shows that if you send 28 requests simultaneously and give a delay of two and a half seconds between each uh, set of 28 requests, you'll still hit something like 672 per minute. So in other words, it's 
you are able to quickly saturate the limit very quickly. Uh, so to avoid the getting banned or uh, over uh, overshooting the limit, we have to keep it down to about 28 per minute because we have a lot of URLs that we needed to scrape. Right? So if you think about it, there were some three between nearly 400 users were there. So that's already a minimum of 400 URLs we had to scrape or 400 requests that we had to make. And then uh, each of those users uh, may have up to five more extra requests, right? Because you'll get uh, 500 reports. So all in all, maybe we might have had something like 600 requests in total. So in order to stay within the safe limit, uh, we had to make sure that we are uh, sending it at most 28, even though GitHub says you can send 100 concurrent requests. So if you make it 100, so if I do 100 into 24, that will come up to 2400. That is uh, about 900. All right. So. Is it clear to you guys so far? What's uh, how we managed to do it? Uh, yes, it was explained previously. Okay. The um, but did you understand how the code works? Uh, what uh, Jivraj showed? Not fully, but if no, you I think you can that explain the code, uh, you can explain also. And if you share that code, we can go through it uh, and yeah. understand it line by line. Okay. Yeah, we'll make uh, we'll make this. Have that much time, right? Yeah. We'll make this. Sure, we'll make this snippet uh, available to you. This this sure. particular async snippet. Yeah. Okay, I'll put up uh, another poll now. This will probably be even more shocking to you. So, do you see another poll? Yes, it's visible. Okay. Okay, guys, answer this uh, second poll. <laughs> Jivraj, there's a lot of background noise. Can you ask the uh, EAs over there to. Yeah. So the asynchronous snippet, you can use it for other kinds of uh, scraping that you need to do uh, because it's a fairly generic piece of code. Uh, you just have to tailor it to your use case. We, ta of course, uh, tailored this to our particular use case uh, with regards to how we used it. Um, in particular, one thing that we did differently was, in order to make it very fast, is we scraped, we put a, a URL list of all users uh, in one shot and then scrape the first page of the 500 repos uh, in the for loop instead of doing it the other way around. Normally, typically, you would do it by sending just a, a single user and uh, trying to get up to five pages. Uh, but what we did is we did it the other way around, which made it particularly fast. So, But the, in, the code inside the for loop, the the fetch await and uh, those things, those are the key components of what makes the asynchronous call work. Whereas the for loop part of it, uh, that's a little bit of our own little magic that we put to it. But uh, if you understand how the asynchronous call works, uh, then you'll be able to use that in any other kind of work. Okay, so and I the see other... the port. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So I, I was talking about uh, the logging part that we did. So wh whenever we, we are sending a request, this fetch function, it is sending a request for every uh, particular URL. So if that request was not successful, in that case, what we are doing, we are logging the information so that we can run, uh, run, run it again. 
so in the log file what we are doing we are putting the url and then we are also putting the error so using that what we can do we can after this particular code runs if there are some information that is uh, that that was not captured then in that case we can just uh, rerun those particular urls I mean, those particular requests we can resend we don't have to send all request again if something bad goes <laughs> okay so the results of the poll are in uh, now what if i told you guys you can actually solve entire of entirety of project 1 without uh, cheating in under 5 minutes you know the poll we just put up would you, would you believe that it's possible it's hard to believe okay so that's something else we wanted to demonstrate um, so jivraj can you uh, pull up your um, your submission Okay, so one of the things we had to do, of course, is uh, we had to submit uh, our own um, uh, project as well, uh, because we have to validate it and do things of that sort. And um, if you noticed, uh, when you pull up project, there was a check answers button at the bottom, right? And uh, when you hit the check answers button, you got the result of the check answers instantly, correct? Hello? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that should give you a clue, OK? First of all, uh, when you submit, when you send a request across the internet, like even when you send it to GitHub, even though it was a simple JSON, it, took, it takes some time for the information that you're sending to reach the server, and then some time for it to respond and return a result, right? So some time elapses. Whereas here, as soon as you press the button, check answers button, instantly it's able to validate your answers. And we left some clues in uh, the discourse threads as well that the uh, validation is being done on the front end. So the question that should come to your mind then is, if the validation is being done on the front end, that means it does not have to send the answers anywhere to find the answers to the questions. So one thing we've been talking about is how you can use JavaScript to scrape sites, right? When you can't use beautiful soup or things of that sort. So this was a little, what you call Easter egg that was kept in the, um, this project page to see if students discover that they can actually get all the answers instantly. So, and uh, Anand said, if anyone is able to do that, then he's happy for them to receive the full marks. Because uh, they are talking about the sources tab. Yes. So just yes. go go ahead and uh, submit uh, submit your URL. Do you have your URL submitted for this? Because you need the URL. No, no. You would need the URL, Chivraj. Your GitHub URL will still be needed. <laughs> So the first part is this is a, it's important that you submit the URL because that's the validation is always done on your data set. Okay. So yeah, go ahead. So now if I hit check answers button. Okay. Maybe you can uh, pop out that window. Okay. 
Jibraj, just um, just uh, remove the developer window separately. Okay, okay. So it's visible what is happening. Now, where you see the dock, right? You can um, use the yeah, use that. Yeah. Okay, so the first part uh, that you should notice is yeah. that um, no. yeah, go ahead and demonstrate. <laughs> So first, first part uh, to notice is it is fetching these two uh, files from the GitHub, GitHub repository that you have published. So this is way you can know if uh, your file have been fetched correctly or not. And other than these two requests for fetching the CSV files, we are not sending any other request. So ideally, if I click on the check answers button, what it should do, it should send a request to some backend and then that should, along with the answers that you gave, and that should then validate uh, your answers. Uh, is that correct? Everyone agrees to it, right? So, but here, that's not happening. So here we, we are just sending two requests. One is to get users.csv and another is to get repository.csv. So that means something in the front end itself, it is these answers are getting checked. We are not sending the data to the back end. Because if we were sending data to the back end, we should be able to see it here. The request is going to the back end with the post method along with the answers that you are sending. So then, uh, here, uh, here we have uh, a, a script that checks for the answers. So this is under the sources tab. Okay, this is where you get the the files that are uh, that the web page has brought up. So under sources, you have uh, the script project one, and if you go through the script. First, the first thing you should notice is there are for each question there are um, functions that do the exact job of validation. Okay, you'll see uh, question one, question two. You'll see the exact function that runs and does the validation. So that's the first thing. But of course, you can uh, extract this code and then uh, run it on your either on uh, your command line through npm. Or you can write a uh, Python equivalent by sending it to GPT, but that is still going to take time, right? The question is, can you do it in under five minutes, right? Uh, and so the way to do that is, if you think about it. Oh yeah, okay, go ahead, Ash. You were asking. You wanted to ask a question. Uh, no, no, by mistake. Okay. So the question is, okay, we know we can see the function. We can see exactly how it's validating it. And we can use GPT to find out what this means and convert to a Python equivalent, all that we can do. But can we actually just get the answer straight? And the answer is yes. So if you scroll down to the bottom of these uh, expected questions, right towards the end, I think, yeah. So around line 100 and no, 190, go a little bit further up, a little bit up. Ah, there, somewhere, yeah, yeah, okay. So you see question 16 and then 211, there is a, a return. Uh, of, uh, there's a return one over there. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, right at that point we'll put a breakpoint. How many of you know what a breakpoint is? You use it in debugging usually. So a breakpoint is when a program is executing. If you want it to stop at that point and not continue execution until you tell it to continue. Uh, that's what a breakpoint is. It's saying stop execution at this point, and I want you to freeze the values of all the variables that are there, that are being used in the program, right? So, Jivraj, go ahead and put a breakpoint over there at uh, 211. 
uh, we can continue from here. So this is way to uh, put a break, break point. We can just click here and it will put a break point that will appear in red. Okay. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to see the result uh, yes. of the um, computations that it has done for the validation, right? So there is an object that is going to be holding the answers to the um, uh, questions that have been validated. So if you can get hold of the object, uh, Jivaj. Uh, which is expected. So even if I hover over it, it is showing me the answers. Yeah, you can go ahead and put a watch on, on that uh, object. And uh, there are all the answers for the, um, the project that uh, you're going to be submitting. So the reason it stopped at Q4 is I think you have, um, you had a breakpoint earlier, right? Where you stopped the, you'll have to run it without the. So what I can do, I can just uh, go to this particular line. That should. Mm, no. Just resubmit and uh, remove any extra breakpoints that are there. Then it will stop at the um, at the return stage. You could directly just console dot log as well. Yeah. You could directly just console dot log expected before the return stage. Okay. So now you can see you got the, all the answers. If you fill in all these answers, exactly as shown over there, you'll get full marks for the project without even having written a line of code. So was that, uh, was that something new you guys learned? Very interesting. Yeah. So this is, this is one of the main reasons why they don't put the validation on the front end, okay? In, if you look in exam portals and things of that sort, it is to avoid this kind of hack. But uh, Anand deliberately left this in so that to see if any students do it. But you can see all the answers are there. If Jivraj puts all those answers in exactly in those things, you will get the correct answer for everything because the validation will say it's all correct. Okay, I hope that was instructive. In that case, if uh, the people uh, whose repos have been submitted have been assigned to us for peer review, if their code is not present, we have to assume that they have done it like this. Um, maybe, maybe. It's, we do, I mean, the one thing to remember is um, there is also another issue that the uh, script checks, and that is how many uh, users are expected in the users table. And uh, Jivraj, if you can just show where in the script that is available. If you scroll down, no, no, it was at the bottom, I think. At the bottom. So this is the expected users for the various data sets that were given out to various students. So if you didn't have, for example, if you look at London, if you didn't have 322 users, then um, uh, 
and uh, there is a tolerance that uh, Anand had given about 10 percent tolerance. So 322 plus or minus 32. If you didn't have something within those range, then also your uh, answers would uh, your repo would be rejected. So that was something else just to keep in mind. But basically, the answer key is sitting inside your browser itself. Browser, yeah. yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> yes. So next project will not have these options, right? Uh, that I don't know. <laughs> but uh, remember the I clues just... I gave you. The main clue was the speed at which it validated, right? It meant that something is going on in the program. And if you know how to use the developer tools, then you can get access to some of these inner workings of what's happening. Where will you share this code? This uh, on for getting this data repo. This is on the on your project page itself. It's uh, you go to sources and then uh, in the not this. When you I'm, I'm asking this. Uh, I think uh, he is talking about this particular. Yeah, report. this one. Right, right, right. This one. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll post the snippet of that on discourse. Fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else that uh, needs to be discussed regarding project? So, Harsh, uh, I see in your question. No, there's no uh, no marks deducted um, if you scrape using JS. Uh, it doesn't matter how you scrape it. The point is to get the answer. And that was all. And we that also was. don't know uh, if you have used a script or not. Okay, Jibraj, you can continue uh, your session. I'll uh, drop off. Okay. Uh, Harsh, can you just clarify your question? What do you mean by use of GitHub package? Is it final? You're talking about using their, uh, uh, their, um, they had a way to scrape data, right? I think using their CLI or something. Ah, uh, Octokit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Octokit. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Whatever way you feel, feel comfortable to use, it's fine. And uh, even if you didn't know how to do the scraping, if you looked at the top of the JavaScript on the source pages, there itself, it also has that uh, option available, I think. Uh, I think Anand had shown us that uh, script uh, able to scrape. Okay, carry on, Juraj. Uh, yes, Monica. I just wanted to uh, uh, clarify that uh, for ROE 1, do we have uh, a syllabus from week 1 to week 4 or week 1 to week 5? Week uh, 1 so to 6. Yeah, 1 six. to 6. Okay. Yes, 1 to 6. I've uh, posted on discourse and announcement with regards to that. Okay. So 
that update was done yesterday uh, in terms of uh, we were notified yesterday that it will be 1 to 6. Okay. So before ROE, we have to go through the content 1 to 6. Yes. I mean 5 and 6 at least, 1 to 4 is already done. Yeah. I mean for every term, since TDS was launched, it was week 1 to 4, which is why when we were asked at the beginning of the term, we said it's from week 1 to 4. But uh, this Wednesday, Anand uh, said it will be this time from 1 to 6. That's hard. Uh, yes, ROE is open internet. You can use anything you want. Uh, you can use uh, GPT, you can use a friend. Uh, anything is uh, okay. There's no, no limits. Sky is the limit. Uh, how to practice for ROE? So for ROE, you need to know about uh, web scraping. So that is uh, how you can construct the correct query to uh, select a particular element from uh, the HTML and those things, HTML and XML. And other thing to know is uh, PDF, how to get uh, data from a particular portion of uh, PDF and those things. And uh, then this uh, cleaning up the data is also something that you need to know because whatever you will get from the web, you might need to clean it up. For that, uh, you can use pandas or some uh, bash commands and anything that is allowing you to clean up the data. And uh, so the, the, these, uh, you, you might also get questions on uh, to, uh, using your GitHub to Sorry, chat GPT token. You might need to send some request to the backend, and uh, I think there might be some questions on embeddings and those things. So week five, you can expect something. Mm. Other than that, you might uh, so you might receive data in different format. So for example, some of some data you can receive in HTML, some data you can receive in database. So you might need uh, to know different ways to um, aggregate the data and put it in a single place so that you can work with it. So for that, you might consider keeping everything in uh, Python data frame, I mean, Pandas data frame, and you can save it in CSVs. I think that's all you need to know. Is it that uh, like uh, you need to get a data and all the questions will be based on that? Or it will be different data in different questions. So, see, there, there, there might be different data set. And for answering a part, one question, you might need data from different sources. So there can be data databases and then there can be CSV file or there can be some HTML file out of which you need to get the data. I think uh, one question can be created uh, using, I mean, one, for answering one single answer, you might need different files. So in that case, you need to aggregate the data. OK. So how many of you know how uh, any technique for scrapping PDF files? Mm, anyone? Amit? Uh, Devam? Uh, 
हर्ष टेबुला भाई ओके यूजिंग टेबुला सो व्हाट व्हाट यू कैन स्क्रैप यूजिंग टाइप टेबुला स्पेसिफिकली टेबल्स सो इफ आई will you be able to scrap this data using tabula the table is fine but the boxes it is somewhat difficult okay so do you think you will be able to scrap this uh, this particular table mm, possibly yes okay so... Uh, you want to try that? Sure. Uh, if you want to try scrapping this data using tabular. Let me just take a screenshot. Ah, uh, screenshot won't work. I can provide you the URL itself. Yeah, please. Because when I tried, I was not able to scrap it using tab tabula. So you can pick any one of the pages. So I have uh, from from this particular uh, this particular uh, PDF. I have just uh, selected page number. One hundred and seventy-seven. No, one hundred and seventeen, which have information about the Madras uh, constituencies. Give me five, seven minutes. so others can also try okay uh, can can you guys raise hand who are trying harsh is trying okay. and dal is also trying okay कोशितो आर यू ट्राइंग सो आई विल वेट फॉर थ्री टू फोर मिनट सिंस हर्ष एंड इंदल दे आर ट्राइंग Sir, what do you want to scrape us like Madras constituency? You told something. What is that? Ah, uh, yeah. So, so this was the uh, uh, link that I have shared in the chat box, yeah, where yeah. information about the constituencies are there. so from this particular uh, pdf i i you, you can select any of the page i have selected page number 117 okay okay any page that have some information like this it have some constituency and then some candidates are there okay okay um jibran it would be good to tell them what fields you want them scraping what information they uh, that you want scraped out of the so in particular we are interested in scraping the constituency name and then the name of the candidate the party of that particular candidate and how many votes that uh, candidate received so we are interested in scraping constituency name 
and this particular uh, row so that uh, have data about uh, the name and, and party and the notes and we want to do it for all the constituencies so if if you are considering page number 117 so it must uh, have these six constituencies and uh, these uh, candidates whoever are there Hello, Hirsch. Just one second, and it is trying to load some J pipe. No JVM share. Okay. So in there, have you try tried scrapping the uh, table? So wh what did you get out of uh, when you tried to scrap the table? What did you get in response? Are you asking me, sir? Oh, no, I'm asking uh, Indel. A okay, lot of errors. Actually, I was also receiving a lot of errors. Uh, wait a second. If it is available in the notebook, then I will show if it is similar to what I was receiving. Uh, no, I have removed it. I think uh, anybody else other than Hirsch and Indel that uh, that are who are trying. Form it is just forbidden. Forward three. Hmm? This is the link is forbidden, but I'll check one more time. Oh, is it? Yeah. Are you talking about this one? You shared some link in the chat, right? Okay. I'm not sure why it is showing you. Case for others only for me. Yeah, uh, I, I mean I'm able to open it in the um, browser, but if I try to open it uh, using Python, uh, I'm getting four more. 
Okay, actually, you need to first download it up. I think how, how, how you are doing it? You're sending some, uh, you're directly putting this link, right? Yes, yes, that's how I'm doing it. Okay, so you you first need to download it and then only you can do it. Okay, okay, I'll do I'll try that. So I think you will receive some kind of error. Yes, I'll check. did you manage to get the data? Managed to get a Java home error. Hmm? Java home error is coming. Just trying Java to home error. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that, that, that was the same error that I was getting. Uh, so actually, when I download it, right, it's showing it's HTML document, it's not PDF. Is it? Maybe you have clicked here, uh, save this uh, save, save button. So it, instead of save, you can just click on print button and then you can select save as PDF. And then you can just click on save button. That's me. That way you can see. It. I think it worked for me. Oh, is it? Mm. Just give me. It gave me something. Not sure what. You can share your screen, Hush. So we can see what's going on. Yeah. Do the app. Screen is visible, right? Yes. So it gave me something like this on page number one hundred and sixty. On page number one hundred and sixty. If I compare it, no. This one. What are the zero? So you are getting voters poll percentage mm. and valid votes. Yeah, this thing I'm getting. This yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know. I might have to search the documentation. Okay, but uh, this ta tabula, what it, uh, the features that it provides, it will allow you to scrape data from uh, tables only. Mm. Yeah, but, but the one that we have, this is not inside the tables. This is, I don't know. Import tabula, PDF path, stream, PFS of zero. <laughs> This type of table I can break, but this type of table I'm unable to break. Ah, uh, yeah. Because that that is inside the table, so it has some boundary uh, okay, between so the different. Is for the boundary, is it? Hmm. Okay. As far as I remember, it detects the boundaries, and then th that's how it uh, gets you the data. So. I could do the area thing. Okay, try that. Now, what is this area? So even if you try the area, what it will do, if there are multiple tables that is similar to the table that you were showing, 
Mm-hmm. Can you move to this table? Yeah. So the, in, in this particular page, there are different tables, right? Mm-hmm. If you scroll to the second page, can you scroll to the second? So there you see these two tables. Mm-hmm. So now you want to get a particular table from these two tables. That's where it, uh, that area and those things help. This part. Yeah. So now oh. from, from these two tables, you might be interested in getting one particular table. Mm-hmm. So I, I'll try this, but I cannot say that anything will happen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just stop sharing. It was Amit who did it last to last, I guess. Last to last term, he did it something like this only. I'll have to go through his code once. And Carlton was not a T at that time. Okay. Are you talking about this particular website? Did he manage to escape this uh, using tab- tabula? No, not this website, but he did something with the voting link only. He did something with the voting data only. Okay. Yeah, that was a, a different PDF. It wasn't this type of PDF. Okay. I might have to revisit that. But yeah, how would you do it? So this information on the PDF, it is located on a particular coordinates. So if I if you talk about this particular constituency name, it is situated at some units away from the x-axis. So if I consider this as an origin, so some few units away from the x-axis and some units away from the y-axis. So that's how the data is located in the PDF. So if we can get those correct coordinates, then we can extract the data, right? So there are few libraries that allows us to do that. So there is uh, this particular library, PDF Plumber, which will allow you to open one PDF and then you can just get the zeroth page because what it will do it will give the page in in form so you can extract different pages out of this particular uh, pdf and then on the zeroth page i can extract all the text lines and then if, if I do this, what I will get, I will get uh, something similar to this, which have this information. And if I open it in the text editor, it have some x0. These are all the coordinates. This x1, this bottom, and these things, they are coordinates. And then it also have this text. So now if we can analyze the pattern somehow, then we can get this data. That's one way to scrape this data. So here, this particular coordinate, it appears only at one place. So the thing here is this particular constituency name and this constituency name, they are equally apart from x-axis their distance from x-axis remains the same and for these names they are also equal units apart from the x-axis from y-axis it is different because this is near and then this is far apart. sir uh, yes Koshito. Yeah, sir, can you show, show it please again how you get this? So I have opened up with this particular file, the page number 117th of uh, that uh, 
constituency data data and then i'm i'm reading this zero piece page from it and then i have just extracted all the lines so if you extract all these lines you will get something similar to this this is part of uh, the module itself but this is very difficult to interpret there is one another library that will give you much better and cleaner uh, output so this is the one that that will give you some, something similar to uh, this output so here what we have we have this uh, general elections uh, india and some text like this uh, so it is this particular text now if i look at this name and then if i copy this x coordinate from here so now it is appearing six times right so this these are six different constituencies because they are similar distance apart from the x axis and if you are thinking how, how from where i got this code i just got it from the internet itself i was just searching for how i can how i can get the locations of uh, different uh, uh, elements inside a P pdf so i i i just read this particular article on this particular post on stack overflow and this is where this code was present and this code this code will get me the location of uh, different elements of pdf so what it will do it will get me something similar to this and then i am just looking for this particular coordinate and we just checked it is appearing six times because there are six different constituencies so so the distance from this x axis if i consider this horizontal as x axis it will remain same for all these now if i look for this name it should have a different uh, x coordinate and if i go uh, pick this coordinate from here so this is also appearing six times i guess so it is all these names i um, which all names are there let us see so we have vv giri that is this first one then we have this name then we have n rama uh, this is the one this appears here and if i just change it a little bit if i just delete these characters then it is ma matching with other it is matching at 27 places so now what are these 27 places so this is 4 and then th these are 5 and then so what i i am able to get now i am able to get all these at one place so they are they have a little bit difference between their coordinates so yes harsh no i am telling that i have been i have tried and it has come out to be a success okay with tabula yeah tabula you have got uh, this data is it i i would say not complete but yeah approximately i got it okay you want to share the screen 
No, I'll just share the code if you can try it. If you want, you can share your screen. That will be because output is available to you. That is also fine. Page number one one seven, and this is the area means the first table. Approximately this much. this much thing it is approximately this much. Okay, and how how did you manage to get this area? I just set this guess thing to false. Guess thing to false. Uh, okay. What this does is okay, it will try to guess whether it is a table or not. And based on its convenience and borders, it will tell that yes, it is. But if you set it to false, there is tag uh -huh. overflow post also uh, to take or extract this data. This thing they try okay. doing guess equal to false. Okay, okay, okay. So okay, so the, <laughs> so the question is, how did you got this area? That's what I am asking. Yeah, zero, zero, two hundred and uh, one thousand. Uh, trial and error. See, the format is top, left, bottom, right. So this is zero, zero. Okay. And if I consider this page to be of seven sixty eight comma. No, wait, not seven sixty eight. This should be. I ninety two minus three eighty nine. I ninety two minus three eighty nine times hundred. So this is twenty thousand points in here. If I'm not mistaken in the calculation, this is twenty thousand points. Then this zero zero, this is hundred, and this is supposed to be somewhere near. Eighteen seventeen thousand. This is supposed to be somewhere near eighteen seventeen thousand. This is all manual work. The more you increase the area, the more output you get, and from there you have to assume something. Okay, okay. Something like a guesswork, but. What we could do is we could take the whole page. We could just not provide this width property and only provide the height, so it will give us the proper value. Okay. And now, if I want to extract different, uh, different, uh, there are six different tables. So I need to give the area for every single table, right? You could do that. Or what you could do is you could directly just give. You could direct directly just remove the area property, but then you have to. You will need to have separate the tables. Separate tables. Separate tables means it will all come as a simple single table. I'll show you that also. Okay, how it is coming. Ah uh, okay. Yeah, you could just. Uh, uh, is this screen visible? Okay. This is what is coming like. If I remove the area thing, then I'll have to do this manual. This uh, separation, I have to do it manual. <laughs> so you are getting all those uh, uh, okay. i i got it so the only difference that you are getting is uh, you are getting all of them at in a single line yeah okay, okay. So that was good learning thank you sir thanks for
so that is one way of uh, doing it and then this is another way we can say so harsh is able to get the data i was not able to get uh, the same data okay so here i have got the location of these particular uh, um, li lines from the pdf itself and after getting these lines i need to analyze the structure for uh, for for it and if you do this page dot extract text lines so this was the earlier code that that was reading using pdf plumber and then it was showing if i if i do this page dot text text lines then this is how I, I will be able to get this data now if i now this is much more cleaner than the one that we were getting earlier along with the coordinates now what i can do i can just use regular expressions so i can just search which all lines have constituency in front of that and then i can check if uh, those lines have uh, numbers in front of them so if they, they have a number in front of them that that is name of uh, a particular candidate and of uh, if you split them you pieces and those, those things you you can get the party name and how many votes they got and these information but if you need to be careful while splitting them because there are multiple spaces so other way so it's a bit uh, difficult to get this data using these libraries but uh, using tabula you can get it very easy easily so other way you can you can get this data cleaned up so you have this particular data and if you want to get it cleaned so the other way is you can use gpt tokens that you have got so here i have just kept my api key and then i have now what i will do i will send a request to the gpt and along with the request i will send this particular data the one we got using pdf plumber and if i so here what i am doing i am just sending the data that that is there we got from pdf plumber, plumber and then i am also sending one information instruction so the instruction is can you extract constituency name name of candidate number of seats and votes and those information and at the end i am saying gpt to give me data in the json format and that should not be anything else in the response so here what i am doing i am using gpt 4o mini model and then this is usual way you can send request to the gpt so you need to pass some instruction and you need to also pass the data so once i send this this data to the gpt along with instruction and instructions so this this is what i will get so in the response i will get this json that have constituency name then how many seats are there then it also have info this information so it have name and then the party and then votes and the percentage and then if i keep us scrolling it will give name of other candidates as well
and then this is another constituency so all this data i am getting is in format of uh, json and i haven't done any manual cleaning or anything i have just uh, sent this particular data to the gpt along with the instruction that i need it in the, that uh, format and i have just sent uh, it on the so how many of you found it interesting to just use chat gpt you don't have to really do much of work. it's much easier than manual manual yeah. writing <laughs> hmm. so but what are the disadvantages using this approach what do you think are disadvantages monica can you do, do you know about some disadvantage of using this approach yes, i am giving it a thought okay you can look over here if you want Yes, it might be costly. Yeah, it is costly because you you are just se sending one request, and for sending that request, you are spending these many tokens. Yes. And for uh, every token, GPT is charging you. Yes. Yeah, whole data has been sent, and we are asking it to give the whole data back in JSON format. Yes. And if your j data is big, then the amount of tokens you are spending is too much correct and then this will this will increase a lot so if you want to scrap multiple pages instead of a single page so if you scrap 50 pages that will be more than 50 cents right so that is half dollar And the other disadvantage that you will have is this request processing will take some time. So when I send this particular request, it took 22 seconds. Whereas the code that uh, Harsh have given us using tabula, that code, it uh, just needs few seconds to run. The only thing is you need to identify the correct uh, portion that you want to scrap. And in the uh, later code, uh, you even don't uh, need to do that. So if you use chat GPT like this, then it will cost you a lot. But the only benefit is you don't have to give any, uh, you don't have to do much of the coding. You, you can just get this data and you can pass it to chat GPT and that will be taken care of chat. The formatting and those things will be taken care by GPT itself. So, how many of you found this uh, GPT way of doing is more interesting, or the other way of doing is more, more interesting? I will still prefer doing it manually is good because it won't cost you anything. So now what we will do, we will start with, uh, with uh, this, how you can carry database and how you can join multiple tables inside the database.
So how many of you know what is purpose of a database? What is a database in general? You can just raise the hand. For a place in which we can, uh, in which data is stored in a table format where we can update, delete, or uh, edit the data that we have. Yeah, that's exactly what uh, database will do, and there is something called table inside the database. That's where you will be storing the data. So as I said in your ROE, you might get uh, you you might get some databases, and you will have to carry those databases and get that information into some useful format. Maybe you can get it inside uh, Panda's data frame, and then you need to answer those questions. So on the database itself, you will not be able to answer the questions. So here, what I have done, I have kept a database ready. I, I will just show you what is there inside the database. so i have three tables so that is that those tables they have information about uh, different uh, students and then there is one other table that have information about different classes and then there is third table that is stores information about uh, the student and uh, which class they are into so how many of you are aware about uh, this select a star from students what it is doing can anyone explain it to me? It returns all the entries from the table. Ah, yeah. And then, similar to this particular table, I have two more tables. So this table, it it have information about. Uh, so let, let me just print it. Uh, it could be. What this table have? It have a student ID, it have name, and it have email of the student. So these are three student as of now, and I can insert some new student into it. So let's try to insert one or two more in students to it. And let's also add Amit into the database. Yeah. <laughs> 
so now what i want to do i want to so th th right now that i am working i am working inside this shell itself but now i want to get the same data inside python it itself so the way to get this data inside the python i will just install a sqlite 3 module that will allow me to con connect to a particular database so this is the way i can connect to a database but, uh, okay i can just ask chat gpt how to install this particular module uh, i mean this particular library in python how to install sqlite 3 um, sqlite 3 module in python so sqlite 3 you don't have to install it because it is already inside the uh, python itself so we can just start uh, importing it so now after importing it i will just connect to the database and instead of this particular uh, name i had jivraj.db that had all my tables now after con connecting to the database we can execute uh, queries like this so let's try execute this particular query <laughs> So before that, uh, I need to create a cursor. <laughs> and now it is not, not showing me anything. So what I need to do, I need to fetch something out of it. So I will use fetch all. I 
so we have fetch and fetch fe, fetch one and fetch all so fetch one will allow you to get uh, the first uh, entry from it and fetch all it will show you all the entries that you are getting from this execution of query so if i just do fetch so what are these things these are three tables which we had created a student class and uh, student classes so now i will particularly select something from a student's table so i have got these four students so if i just do a student of zero then i'm getting this particular student right instead of selecting what i can do i can just uh, yeah, Monica. Uh, can you execute fetch one command for select name from students? Yeah. So what fetch all will do, it will allow you to select all the uh, entries from uh, after executing this command, command, select start from students, you will get list of students. So this fetch all, it will allow you to fetch all those students. If you just want to fetch one student, you can do this way. So it will allow you to fetch the first student. But if you want to fetch all the uh, all results that you got from by executing this um, SQL oh, query, you can fe fetch them. Yeah, got the result. So this is one table where we have uh, name and then we also have email. So now what I want to do, I, I want to load this table into pandas because that's how if I can load it inside the pandas, then it will be something similar to reading the CSV, right? So the way we do it in pandas is you just use pd.read csv and then you need to provide uh, I, I think i will need to check the syntax for it so if I'm not mistaking, let me. Connection is not defined. Oh, it is C O. It was read as Q. So now I, what I have done, I have just got the same database into the Pandas data frame. Now we can just save it as a student's table. After saving it inside the student's table, we have two more tables. So we can go to those two tables as well. So the other table was classes. And the third table was Okay, we need to store it in classes. Thank <laughs> you. 
and what this in, student classes uh, inform, have information about is which student have associated to which class so student one is taking cl uh, class with class id one and if we look at what is class id one so class id one is tds so the student with the student id one is taking tds class so student id one is associated with carlton and carlton is taking tools in data science class and student id one he is also taking linear algebra class and then the same student is also taking system governance class so now what i am interested in doing is <laughs> so we might be interested in seeing with these information at a single place so what i'm i am interested in seeing is i want to get this name at one place and i also want the information about the name of the class so how can i do that anyone have any idea about it so you can use giants like left giant uh, yeah so which all joins we can use so if you want to like intersection you can do inner giants but if you want to go like if you want all the content from the left side of the table if you have two tables if you want the content from the left table you can use left giant like right giant is also like vice, vice versa Hmm, okay, so Jay Prakash, can you explain me what is inner join? What it will give us? Intersection, like what are the, the things that are common in both the, both the tables, like A and B. If you have two tables, it will provide you like it will like return the things that are common in both the tables. So let us say in our uh, student class case. Okay. We have a student table and a student classes table. Mm -hmm. Now, if I say there is a student who haven't taken any class, okay. so will that information come if I do inner join? No, sorry, it won't. So yeah. So what this and what what about this left join? So let us say this table one is a student table. Mm. Then what it will show us? So that it is will, yeah, it will give you the yeah, it will give all the students, even the students who doesn't take any class. Ah uh, yes, correct. And what this full outer join will do? It will like combine both the tables and it will give the output. Sir. It will take if it will take details from like the students details and the classroom details who are attending the class and the student details. Hmm. So it will give us information about all the classes and it yeah. will also give us information about all the students. Yes, correct. If there is one class that is not uh, taken by any student, still it will show. And if yes, there sir. is some student who have taken some class, but this information is not available in the student table, still it will provide that uh, student's information. Uh, yeah. So now we can have a look at inner join thing. So what I want to do, I want to. So. Which... <laughs> For example, if I perform a student and if I, if I just perform inner join on this table and this table, then what I will get? So you will get, uh, may I see that? You will get the information of student uh, one and two only. 
Yeah, I, we will get the information about student one and student two only. Yes. And now after getting this information about a student one and a student two. Okay. Now if I do the inner join on uh, whatever we have got, if I do the inner join with classes, then what I will get? You want to inner join? No, no, inner join will provide one and two only, the student information of one and two. Because one and two is present in both the tables, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, so let's do that then. I will just copy this code from here. And I need to change the name of the table. So what we want to do, we, we are anyway applying inner join. So it doesn't matter which is table one and which is table two. Yes, correct. So we have students and then the other table is student classes and this should be inner join and what all information we need we need uh, a student dot name and a student dot email and uh, a student dot e class id right no, yeah. i mean a student underscore class dot class id yes yes no, you want you want to join with student ID only. But what information you are trying to extract? Maybe. So what I am trying to extract is, I want something like this. So you want names want and the email beside that, right? The student name. Okay. Email, okay. and you can also have a student ID. Okay. Okay. Yes, you can perform inner joins like on student ID. Come on. Student start. Name. Yeah. And then comma student start email. No, but e email is not present in that table, right? Email is present in which table? Uh, it is present in the student table. OK, OK. <laughs> you can put alias if you want. You can put alias. So that it will be, you don't have to write student starts for today every day. Uh, yeah, we can put allies. But uh, this is also fine, okay? Yeah, it's also fine, but in case if you want. Mm -hmm. So uh, can can you explain all these components of this table? What is this from, and then what is this inner join, and then what is this on? Yes, I can, but yeah, but you are uh, in the first line, right? You have put students start student ID. Like everything is coming from single table only. If you want everything from single table, why we are doing a join? Ah, okay. We also want the student uh, class okay. dot class ID. Okay. okay. So, so what is happening here is it is it will perform an inner join on a student's table and a student classes table and it will check for all the entries where student id is matching with uh, the student id in a student's table yeah correct Is there any mistake why we are getting the underline and underline? Yeah, because this is SQL code, right? Oh, I cannot run it in Python itself. Yes, yes, yes. What I need to do, I will need to execute the cursor. Oh, yes, yes, correct. 
So now <laughs> so we have got these five uh, students and we haven't got information about uh, those students who haven't uh, enrolled themselves into a single course now now what i want to do on on what we have got after doing this inner join i want to do another inner join that will give me uh, that should give me a student name email and then class name okay so the way to so do, do you know how i can do that yes sir but uh, like uh, i forgot what's uh, like what information is on which table like may i see the table on what um, yeah so we have only two tables right students table and classes table right or we have three tables we have a students table okay we have classes table and we also have a student classes table let me just print it here mm -hmm. so you want to extract the information of students who have not joined in any classes right no what i want to do i i have got this information okay so this is student id and this is class id right okay he's Okay. But now I I want to replace this class ID with the actual name of the class. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Now you can also do another inner join with this table with the classes table. And now we can do another inner join on this particular. Yeah, inner inner join. Inner join this uh, this particular table like. Yeah. But before doing that, we will need to give a name to this table because yes. that's how yeah. I will be able to use it. Yeah, yeah. Because this is a uh, yeah. Hmm. This is like created table, right? Yes. Yeah. This is created table, so we need to mm -hmm. put a name. Yeah. Let's call it a temporary table. Okay. Uh, join. Classes, right? Because now I want to get the information yeah. of classes, and then we can just do on on class ID like student start temple that class ID. Yes, temp temp. You want to join this table, right? Temp table. Right? Ah, yeah, yeah, correct. It is temp. This should be same as class dot class ID. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, you also have to put what information you need, you need class name right that you have to mention on the top right uh, correct 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 so here instead of class uh, id i need class name Sir, no, no, like it won't work. I guess if you remove this thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, it won't work because you have removed the classes ID. What you have removed from there? Classes ID you have removed, right? No, class ID we haven't removed. Okay. What was there before? Uh, class some state name right something was there oh, here okay because we can't join if you remove that uh, classes that id that has to be inside the temp table right uh, yes 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 
So you have to put bracket and you have to create like sub query. You have to put bracket for this. You can remove classes dot name and put classes dot id there. Yeah, classes dot id. Yeah, class id. Uh, you have to create like sub query. Yes. And this whole thing it needs to be go uh, inside. inside it. Yes. And then this join will happen, and this whole thing. It'll go something like this. I'm not sure if this is correct syntax or not. No, no. Yeah, select. Uh, you need uh, everything. Star comma classes dot class id. Star. You have. You can directly put star, right? Star comma classes dot class id. Comma. You have missed the comma there. In front of classes, from you can use from in front of the bracket after the classes dot class id. So you have yeah you you remove that one thing one bracket you remove. There. Oh. Are you talking about this one? Yes, you can remove the last bracket there, which is like classes dot class id. So yellow color you can remove yellow color bracket you can remove. Mm, okay. Yeah, now this becomes like this becomes a single table. The temp becomes a single table. So now you can. Uh, yeah. So now what we have done, we have uh, we are here select. So this yeah. is our sub query that will get us a student mm -hmm. ID and the student name and email. Email. Student class ID also. And class ID as well. Yeah. Yeah. And we are just calling it as temporary. Temporary table, and we are doing inner join with the classes table so that we can get class ID also. Yeah. So I think we don't even need to put this. No, you I have to put class ID. Oh, wait, your classes name. Sorry, classes name. Classes or classes name. Unique classes name. Okay, let's try this. What is the name of the truck? Yeah, it was just name. Okay, it was just name. Okay. So now we have got uh, all those information, but this is not clean information. Yes. Um, not sure why it's like this. Um, yeah, it's like. Uh, so the, those informations are available in classes table also, right? So it is giving it two times like this. Uh, yeah, so I think we don't need this. If I remove this, still it should be fine. Okay, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, correct, correct. Now if I look at a single entry in this, so mm -hmm. this is what we are getting. We are getting the ID of the student, then name of the student, and uh, this must be. Uh, this is email, and yeah, and class, uh, yeah, because the class is in both the tables, classes table and also in this temporary table. So here we can remove in temporary table. We can remove inside the bracket. There is some classes. So that we can't do. Okay, okay. So instead of selecting star, we have to specifically mention those column names. If you yeah, instead of selecting that, we if we mention it explicitly, then uh, yeah, yeah. the required information will be available. Yes. No. 
And now that there is a uh, Panda's equivalent of this. I guess PD dot merge is there. Yeah, yeah PD dot merge. And then we just need to tell the name of the table, right? Yeah, name of the table. And then I guess. Uh, How is equal to in No, you, yeah. You, you have to like mention which column, right? On which column? Because it will okay. On is equal to mm -hmm. type. Yeah. Okay. Since we don't have duplicates, it will automatically detect and it will do, I guess. Not sure. Okay. And if we had uh, different names, then how, how do, do we do that? So I guess we have to change the name in one of the table. Uh, I am not sure. Okay. Uh, we have to keep it to the same name. We have. We, uh, it has sure. got an uh, attribute left on, right on. Okay. Oh, okay. is it? Ah, uh, yeah. It has some attribute left on and right on. So what this left on will do, it will tell on the left left table that is students. Uh, what should I look for? And on the right table, what should I look for? Correct. The same same student ID only. And this will give me this particular data frame. Now, what I want to do, I want this table to be merged into some other table, right? Yes, you can save this table and do merge one more time. That will be. Yeah, so uh, we can we can just save it somewhere. Let's just call it temp. temp yeah. Now I can do the same thing. Yes. You don't have to copy the whole thing. You just have yeah, I, I, okay. okay. This should be class underscore ID. Class ID. Yeah. There is some function which we can write to remove these duplicate columns while we are uh, merging itself. Uh, I'm not sure what the, I forgot. Maybe someone can help. Does anyone know about how we can remove the duplicates from here? Uh, no, drop is not there. Uh, no, no, on the data frame. Not the attitude, the data frame. Okay, oh, on the data frame, right? Yeah. So we have a student's data frame. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, and then we have drop duplicates. So you can't drop duplicates because the, the name is name X and name Y. It has different names, right? The column names are not uh, the same. Because the column names are name X and name Y, it will be like X and Y. So it's not possible to. You can see, right? Uh, yes, yes, it has the same name. So, but here I don't think we, we, we need to drop this because this is like name of the person, this is the name of the course. You can change the name. Like rename the oh. forms. Yes, see, this is name of the person and this is name of the course. And course class ID have just appeared one time. Yeah, yeah one time. It, it automatically gave only one time, it seems. Yeah, it automatically gave us only one time. Yes. 
So you can use rename like uh, rename function. Uh, yeah, the rename can be used and this uh, column name can be renamed. Change. Yes, yes. Okay. Someone have sent a comment. You set. Okay. And then this is query for left join. So what this will do, this will give us this will give us uh, if we have something in table one, let us say if we have a student's table. Now, if that student was not enrolled in any case, then those students should also be visible. But earlier when we run that uh, inner join query, it was not giving us those um, students. So now what I will do, I will try to do this in Python because that is much easier. And it will show us in data frame look. So that will look uh, nicer. So that was PD dot merge, and then I have two tables. So one table is a students table. And and in this uh, left join this this one is called as left table and this one is known as right table so this is the left table so and we have this as right table now how should be equal to it should be left join uh, we can just provide on because uh, the name is anyway same. Yeah, yes, sir. So now, now we have also received information of uh, the other students who haven't taken any class. There we can see NAN values not an number yes, now we can do the same we, we can do it's join with some other table so here the only thing is this is the left table the first one whichever you provide will be the left one or you can even tell which which, which one you want to the left one so now we are explicitly telling that uh, students should be the left table and student classes should be the right table so here this is the left table and this is the right table so this is same query that we can use there now similar to this is right join and there is there won't be any change just to that uh, this will become right and uh, this one will become left that is it and then we have something called as fuller join full join so here we i have already kept one constraint on a student classes table so that this will have a constraint that uh, student id will belong to student table and class id will belong to classes table so if i do the full join Th this result won't change. So 
so and now let us say you you are interested in to doing something on the same table so you have you are selecting the name of the uh, you, you you are just selecting some column and you have two, these two tables and then you have this where close so if i show you this example so what this is doing it is getting name of uh, the customer and it is aliasing at is it as name one and then it is doing b dot uh, so so what they are doing they are selecting these two tables and then they are trying to check if uh, if those two customers have same city and if they have same city then those names will be printed so if you look here so this mexico and this mexico so these are two customers who have same city so these two will get printed so this same join will allow you to apply some conditionals on the same table if you want to apply instead of applying on different tables so this is how you can get information from the same table and you can even up to the same and with regard to the sql querying these joins are important and then selecting is also important and, uh, this where close what it will do it will allow you to put a condition so here what you are trying to do you are trying to carry here you are trying to carry from the customer table you are just trying to look for all the customers who have uh, who belong to mexico country and then you have these uh, equal to greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to these comparators are there and this this is not equal this not equal was used earlier here when we were looking at uh, the query that was selecting customers from the same city right you can also use that uh, exclamation unequal to symbol that will also work like python will use it hmm okay yeah that, that can also that also you can use. <laughs> yeah, it also mentioned there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In some versions, they are allowing to. Yeah. And then you can give some range of values between this value to this value. I I need. And then we have like, so it will search for a pattern. So let us say, uh, you have, my name is Jivraj. And if I provide like is equal to some Jivraj, so what it will do if if Jivraj appears there, then it will select it. So where like is equal to something like that is there, and then it, it will search for multiple possible values. So this equal to was just checking for the equality, but this in what it will do, it will similar to Python list checking. We used to do if this name is there in list or not. So the same is happening here. So you need to know this uh, where close. So this where you can create now. Now if you you are able to uh, load this data inside uh, inside Python using uh, p uh, pd dot reads equal. You can even use pd dot apply and those things i mean like pandas itself gives you flexibility to uh, filter out the data right so you can just use that as well instead of using this where you can use that and these update and delete and these things you don't even have to look at them and these count minimax and uh, average and these things they are already there in python itself and this uh, inner join and these things these are there in python or else you can create a sql query but uh, doing it in python is much more easier you just have to do 
this very small query and you can save things in variables whereas here we had to we had to do this long 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 query and uh, we had to uh, we had to select something and after that we have to rename it to something and then we have to from there we have to do another selection if you want to apply it to multiple things but in python it is very easy you can just save it in variables and you can keep using it i think python one is easy right yes sir but in case you want to extract from the database but you have to use uh, sql only right mysql uh, my SQLite, uh, you can do the same. You, you can even create connection with the my SQLite the same way. But it, it, it will require you some password and those things. Okay. You can connect to the my SQL database and you can query those tables that you need. Okay. And then those tables you can keep it in variables once you have those tables inside python you can do anything with them right yes yes correct yeah. and you can even save these uh, databases <laughs> database tables into the csv files that's also possible <laughs> so that is it for today so from ROE perspective, this SQL thing, you just need to carry the database. And the other thing that you need to know is how to put the conditionals, the correct place to put the conditionals on, and uh, then how you can join multiple tables. The doing it in Python is much more easier. So, anyone want to ask any questions on this topic or earlier? Prina? Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yes. So, do you guys got to the idea what we are doing here? Yes, sir. Uh, anyone have any questions you can ask? Else, I will just uh, stop the recording. So, these are the only contents for ROI, right? ROI 1, right? No, nothing other than this. So, yeah, so for ROE1, you, you need to know how to get uh, data from PDF. You need to know how to get data from SQL uh, databases. And then you need to know how to get data from HTML and XML pages. OK, OK. So there are these three ways you can get data from. Now, once you get data, and they might ask you to do embeddings and those things as well, right? For that, you will need the knowledge of using chat GPT embeddings uh, okay. thing. And they can ask questions on peers and correlation, and uh, there are a lot of uh, things. So, but but, but uh, with respect to connecting, the, these are the three things. Uh, database, and then the uh, other thing is XML and HTML files. You, you need to get data from there. And then the third thing is, uh, yeah, the fourth thing is they can even give you some link and they can ask you to send API calls and get data from there. That is also possible. These are three, four ways. And the one, one more way is they, they will just give you parquet file and they will ask you to get data from that. So the, that, that is very easy. You just use pd.read parquet and you just give the path of that file. Okay, okay. Yeah. It will open it, it as a data frame. Now, once you have this in data frame, you can save it in CSV and open it in Excel itself. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So since no more doubts, I will stop the recording here.